2006 Chevy Cobalt. This is how the AC is supposed to work. You should be able to flip it on any knob or I mean any number with the uh, AC button and the recirculation button lit up and then your AC should work. Um, so here's the problem that I was having on this one is when I would go to one my AC would work, the light would light up and everything would work good. But if I go to two or higher, two, three, and four, then this light turns off. And when this light is off, it means the compressor turns off, and I would, I would still get air coming out the vents, but I wouldn't get cold air. I would only get cold air if the snowflake light is lit up. So initially, I took this out, and I was like, well, maybe there's a wire broke or something. It has aftermarket stereo. Maybe they pinched a wire or something. I don't know. And then I uh, had one of these. Uh, they wanted one of these replaced. So I'm going to save you the time that I had to go through. I replaced this head, and I'll replace... Um, here's my new head I got and I put I put the head in I put a new resistor pack in and it still didn't fix my problem so basically again this is my problem um, but what I found out is that when I would hold this a certain way the snowflake light would come on like that you see like if you if you look down there at the snowflake button see it's popping on and popping off when I hold this thing a certain way so what I re found was that the, there was a loose pin in this connector as you can see this connector is like it's like a connector within a connector and it has a lot of free play so I made like a little plastic shim and I stuck it in here to like not have it uh, move so much I just cut like a little shim out of something I found in the car stuck it in here and then it didn't move as much but it was still not working right and I found out when I twisted it and when it, when it twisted the wire harness just a little bit it put pressure on the wire that was bad or the pin I mean and so what I did is I twisted this two times upside down. I did like a 360 with it. And that harness being kind of twisted, it like kept pressure on that bad pin. And then it, it started working again. So you're probably saying, well, wait a minute, dude, that's like a hackish fix. You can't just twist a wire harness. Um, well, two, well, a few things is one, this wire harness is surprisingly really long. So I twisted it twice and it didn't even, it didn't even, it still had plenty of slack left. Um, and I didn't have, I don't have the resources now to take apart that connector and find the little pin and like probably squeeze it to make it smaller. So I am going to show you guys uh, a better look back there. And I'm also going to show you how to replace this head unit and how to replace the resistor pack and what kind of um, problems you might have if you have a bad resistor pack and what to look for. Um, again, uh, I was asked to replace these things, so I just replaced them, and that's why I have footage of doing it. But again, here's the connector that had the bad pin in it. One of these pins, it was just loose. I couldn't pinpoint which one, but yeah, it's one of these, and um, maybe you could get it. But anyways, if you're going to take this uh, front dash apart, what you want to do is first you want to pop this part loose, and I come over here and pop this part loose. Careful not to lose these gold little tabs. You know, they might be stuck in there, or you know, get those out and put it back on if it falls off when you go to put it back in. Uh, on right there. Uh, but you get this one off, and then you could pull this out. Now, these could be really stubborn, so be careful. Like sometimes they, I feel like they're trying to go to the moon or something with these connectors. They're, it could be super tight, so just and make sure you get the gold parts out. And then uh, this will be held on by two screws. Um, also, once you get the screws out, I'll show you. They would be like right here. And also, they're like, they have a little uh, peg that is used to align it. So, you get those screws out, uh, seven millimeter. And then, once you get the screws off, uh, you would just unplug them all and stuff. And then, uh, this thing comes off. Remember, don't, don't uh, lose the uh, gold little uh i don't know what they're called just clips so uh and when they go back in you just put them in you know just kind of just gently push them in and um yeah so if you had a uh, problem like your air stops blowing when you're on four or three but only that one then you may have a bad resistor it's down here here's your blower motor and uh the resistor is right here and these have had a lot of problems chevy has had a lot of problems Pull your connector off of it, pull that tab back. Check this for any burn marks. Check these for like burn marks or if these holes are stretched out and they need to be like squeezed a little tighter to go back on the pins. Check the wires, make sure they're not burned up. And then here's the actual resistor pack. All you do is you lift up this tab. Sorry, I know this wire's in the way, but lift up this tab and then you could uh, pull it out. Mine didn't have any screws. It just, it was like a, you just move a tab and pull it out. Uh, this one is a solid state one. It's kind of like, just like a microchip. Check out for burn marks or like 
if it looks, you know, burnt or like just deformed, you know, you may have a bad one. Um, like I said, my problem wasn't this, um, but I, I thought it was because it was acting funny and like my air would turn off and on. Anyways, so uh, here's what the new one looks like. The part number's on the front there I showed you. And to put this back in, it's real easy. You just slide it in and it'll just pop right in. Uh, just be careful with it and put your connector back on. And uh, that's how you get this replaced if you need to. Get this in here. <clears throat> Alright, so that's how you do that. Now, hopefully this video helped you guys out and your AC's working normal like this. Um, you, if you're, you're getting no cold air at all and these buttons are lighting up, you may be low on refrigerant or they may not be lighting up at all. Maybe your compressor's not turning on because you're low on refrigerant. Um, coming out the vent, you should get, be getting around 40 degrees you know, on a warm day. Um, any additional information you guys have, you can put in the comments or any questions. Um, any extra finds you guys find out on this is good. Um, in the comments would be appreciated. And uh, thanks for watching. See you next video.